Hello there everybody and welcome to Matt the Dragon Railways and today in this video I'm going to be reviewing this, an Oxford Rail banana van and I'm really looking forward to opening this box and having a look. So I picked this up uh, in a model shop, I wasn't ever going to buy one of these originally but I decided to pick one up in the end because uh, I quite like the look of it. And uh, it took a while because I didn't know which one to get but I got this one, um, the plain one and yeah it looks rather nice through the window. Um, so I picked this up in a model shop and I paid £20 for this as well as four crates of Spam I got on a deal. Um, the crates of Spam little models by Oxford, I never even knew they'd done. And um, those were originally about £6 and uh, I got the two for £20 um, and this was originally six pa uh, £16.95. sorry, I'm really looking forward to opening this box and seeing this model because from my past experience, Oxford Rail have lower prices but excellent quality and it does seem to prove how uh, cheap these can be manufactured for but how good they can be and uh, you can sell these models off at a lower price. Um, I've seen that they do a bogey wagon that they sell you can get for £15 off Hatton so yeah I'm really looking forward to it. But before I open the box, if you are not subscribed to this channel, please do click the subscribe button down below. It would mean a lot. And uh, like this video if you do enjoy it. So anyway, let's open the box and see what we get inside. So here we have it, the Oxford Rail Banana Van. And yeah, like I say, I'm really looking forward to opening this. So uh, just before I do that, just want to say, uh, when I picked this up, I realised that Oxford have changed their colouring on the boxes. You can see they've all dramatically changed. You can see my face. Hello! <laughs> um, but yeah, they've changed the packaging and it's more glossy as well. I personally prefer the older style. It looks close to a coach. Because if you didn't know, um, the box is actually of a coach. So if you look at it here, you've got, say, like your blood and custard. So you'd have your... You uh, red there, your cream, and uh, you've got the lines in that and the greys, your roof. So if you didn't know that, well, there you go. You'll never unsee that again. You see the camera there and me again. <laughs> so, yeah, let's um, open the box. I'm really looking forward to see what's inside. Uh, nice, you know, when you've uh, got a new model, when that feeling of the box is uh, different. Oh, and what's this? That's a surprise. Oh, screw link couplings. Oh, that's, that's actually quite nice. Remember, this model only costs £16. Um, I even got it cheaper with this kind. So, yeah. Wow. Alright, okay, so it is fairly light. But, um, yeah, it seems alright. I don't think it would derail on layouts. It's not that light, but it is rather light. Um, but, yeah, that finish looks quite nice. Um, would you say satin? Yeah, it looks really nice. At least the roof is sat in. And look, you've even got vacuum pipes. I'm not used to this. <laughs> I love the buffers. They're nice and fine. Metal wheels. Wow, look at that. The detail under there. I'll have to a closer look at that in a second. But yeah, I, I haven't ever received a wagon yet that comes with screw link couplings. That's really cool, isn't it? So yeah, I might uh, try them out later and see uh, if they actually can function as real uh, couplings. But yeah, so uh, let's have a closer look at this model because I'm buzzing, I can't wait. So here we have it, the Oxford Rail Banana Van. And yeah, the detail looks really nice overall on this. So I'm going to start off with the roof. Very plain grey, very simple, but um, you might just be able to make out there are lines above the doorways and that would be guttering to um, stop you getting a wet head when you're loading them. And yeah, that's really nice. Very simple, but I'm, you know, it'll be bang on prototypical, I would say. It's Oxford Rail, they do really nice stuff. And I just love Oxford Rail. Um, they, they are like my favorite company for model wagons. Taking a look at the side, you've got a really nice planking effect. And yeah, it's very, very neatly done, isn't it? Um, you can see all the support beams that would be metal, of course the planking would be wooden. And yeah, it's really, really nice. And uh, you've got it on the other side as well. In the centre though, we've got the doors and they are very, very bold. They stick out quite a bit. And uh, I'm very much sure that would be prototypical. Um, you could definitely tell that those were doors from a distance. And yeah, it's really nice. And of course it's repeated on the other side. And yeah. 
I do think those uh, the door moulding is very nice. Like I say, it just stands out. Looking at the printing, we've got the word banana, naturally, and the running number, which is E632899. I'm sure I've read that correctly from uh, a distance further away than the zoomed in camera. And then on the other side, I'm not going to dare to try and say what's under the two letters XP. Um, I have read them before. I know they are legible. They are probably legible to you. But yeah, that's really finely done. And there's no paint bleed on this model whatsoever. And I really like that. And um, just to point out, I uh, went to the model shop and uh, there were other versions. They had the northeastern version, you know, with the NE. And I did take a close look at that model. And there was no paint bleed on that either. So yeah, that's really nice. And when I show you these angles, it really shows the underframe detail. really stands out. So I can't wait to show you that. But first... I've got to show you the frames and the ends and uh, what I mean by the frames is this little sign under here and it looks really uh, crisp doesn't it? it looks really fine as well and yeah I really like that it's a BR plate but yeah very nice and very fine I know you've gone out of focus so uh, it's trying to do its free rolling test already um, <laughs> so looking at the end of this model you've got some great detail and uh, yes yeah, all the standard molding and uh, like I said about the side so I won't go into detail about that but you have a separately fitted vacuum brake pipe and uh, it's quite wobbly isn't it but it's on both sides and uh, that would make it prototypical I'm very much sure after seeing all the ones in the model shop and yeah it looks really nice very fine and something really weird about buying a wagon for this price and you know getting a you know really nice feature like a separately fitted very fine uh, vacuum pipe you have the representation of the coupling hook just below the vacuum hook uh, vacuum pipe sorry if you can just make it out it's hard to point out um, and yeah I'll be trying that out later with the uh, couplings that uh, were supplied with this and see if they uh, work well and I uh, hope they do not pop out Oh, uh, you've got the buffers, very fine, very fine. Um, I believe they are metal, at least the ends are. Um, they're not sprung, but you don't need sprung buffers. This is only £16 as well. And um, you don't really need stuff like that on these uh, wagons. Also, I've just noticed another pipe here. Um, I don't know what that would be for. Oh, probably steam heating to keep the bananas um, warm, um, like they would have been like in their current well that past climate so yeah that's something really nice and fine and i didn't notice that just until now you've got nem couplings very standard uh they've got good flex to them but they do feel quite solid um and do you know what they sit quite level don't they they look quite nice looking at the underframe, you've got nice axle boxes molded on there some nice springs you've even got the brake lever there which is a separately fitted component um i can tell because you can flex it under weight i'm not going to do it now but yeah i know um that is a separate piece which is really nice considering they've had to glue it in there or put on a pivot in there and wind, wind it all through this little gap here and uh yeah that's really nice and that is done on the other side as well and i'm going to turn this model upside down and wow the detail doesn't stop where you don't know. To start off with, you've got the metal spoke wheels. They're nice. You always like a metal wheel. And for a wagon at this price, that is really good. But looking underneath, you've got the planking effect still showing through underneath, which is really, really nice. Um, you've got all the brake details all around the wheels and that. You've even got your vacuum cylinder. And you know what? That is just fantastic. For the price you pay, you're getting detail underneath. There's uh, other manufacturers, <coughs> Blackman who uh, make wagons with plain underneath and cost um, like £23 a wagon. Um, so yeah, uh, Backman uh, have definitely lost this battle compared to Oxford Rail because uh, they normally leave their wagons quite plain underneath. But look at this. It feels like every single bit of detail that should be on this wagon is on this wagon. Of course, you've got the word Oxford printed on the bottom, which does take away the uh, illusion but that's natural for a company to stamp their own name on the bottom um, that's just a thing they do 
One thing I've only just noted as well um, is the buffer beam being picked out in a separate black, which is rather nice. And you can see actually where the body sides and the support beams just go in diagonally. And yeah, that looks really nice. But yeah, I can't get over this detail underneath. So let's take this wagon down onto the model railway. If it's uh, running characteristics as good as its detail, it, this wagon will be definitely well worth it. I'm going to do a free rolling test and then put it within a train, as well as try out its chain couplings. So yeah, join me for that and I'll see you on the layout. So here we have it down on the layout and yeah, it looks really nice, doesn't it? Well, let's do a quick free rolling test, shall we? Um, yeah, it feels all right. Um, I have a wagon that's actually much better than this. Um, there must be a tiny tight spot on this, but oh, it's just gone. Uh, oh, it's going uh, fairly well, actually, off camera. I feel like free rolling is a bit touch and go with reviews because um, each one will be slightly different. So, um, yeah. Um, that's that's all right. Um, I'd say that's good. It's nothing too uh, stiff or anything to move, um, but it's uh, definitely not going to roll away and uh, drive you up the wall. So yeah, that looks really really nice. So what? Uh, I'd better put it into a train. But actually, first, I think it's time I test out the couplings. Right. So quickly, I've took out the NEM coupling as you can see here. Um, it's really, really stiff to get out. I didn't even get the other side out. I will do it in a bit. But you do get um, quite fearful, actually, of uh, how much force you're putting in because there's only a fairly flimsy bit that holds the NEM couplings in. And also, to show I'm not cheating, I've put the blanking plate in on my Sentinel that's going to have a go at hauling it. So um, I'll just uh, attach the coupling. Now, one thing I will say is that I feel like this feature is only for either decoration we'll find out how uh, good that is at um performing under strain or um as working but it would be a summit for wagons that you keep on the layout for a long time and don't really take off the layout because the second you pick these up it's going to be uh ages before uh you know you might drop the coupling and all that it might be a bit of hassle and uh yeah you might not get along with it actually uh that well and um yeah, well, we're just going to have to try it out, won't we? So I'll, I'll just quickly do it. Well, I've got nowhere because it's very fiddly to add on. And um, naturally, that's why I say it's probably more of a thing where you have the loco um, rolling stock stuck in the layout for a long time. But I did hook it. And then when I went to take it down, um, the coupling on the Sentinels come off. So that's a quality thing from the Sentinel. Though um, the couplings aren't really designed, are they, to haul this thing? They're normally there just as a decoration. So now I've got to go sifting through a carpet to try and find a coupling hook for a sentinel to glue in. Yeah, that, that's fun, isn't it? So um, I'll probably see you back in six hours. Right, I haven't fixed the other one, but I found a hook. So I'm just going to try it from the front. Um, and I'm going to try and be as careful as I can but as someone who is very naturally shaky it's um quite difficult right I think I got it oh that's quite tight that's actually quite yeah that's a problem and it's out of shot do you see how close the buffers are that's really nice because it looks realistic but it's quite a lot of strain when I'm trying to twist it so um, it might be fine on something like, you know, your, your straights. Look, it's snapped. The hook has actually snapped off. So uh, I think it's more of a decoration thing. That's a shame that it's broke, really. But to be honest, I probably won't be using these on the layout now. But yeah, that is such a shame. Um, I've broke a sentinel <laughs> and um, a coupling out of it. So um, yeah, it's definitely more of a decoration thing, sadly. So I better tidy up my mess I've made and come back to you. That's a shame, isn't it? Sorry, I keep babbling on on this video, but you can see it's actually going to be quite easy to fix. It just slots round, so yeah, I'll just push that round and uh, that should be fine. That's the uh, hook there that fell off the sentinel. So uh, yeah, I'll have to glue that eventually, but I won't do that just yet. 
but yeah definitely just a feature to be a uh, decoration i think which is such a shame if they made those couplings a tiny tiny bit bigger would have been actually much better and you could have like, used them so yeah that's a shame i think um shame on oxford really but oh well these things happen so that didn't take long very easy fix so uh, if you ever try some out and that happens then uh that's what you do you just squeak uh try and line them back up quite steadily so yeah that is a shame though from oxford isn't it i know i keep saying that but let's be honest the wagon's only 16 pounds that's good on its own even if it didn't come with these so uh yeah we should look on the bright side shouldn't we but yeah um something to note do not try that at home because uh well unless you want to break a loco <laughs> Right, um, I'll get back to you again in a second, I know I keep saying that. Right, so, uh, yeah, big shame from the couplings, isn't it? But I'm not going to want to babble on a bit more, but, yeah, I, I didn't even manage to get to the point where I see uh, how they performed under strain, so, yeah. Anyway, I uh, decided, well, seeing as we featured the Sentinel, and I haven't actually reviewed anything yet that has the Sentinels in a running session. So I thought it was rude not to run PB842, which is one I renumbered. And uh, I've kept the back blanking plate in so it looks better uh, for when going by. Um, there's a banana van. It looks quite nice. I've put a Backman match truck up and uh, another Oxford wagon and an Oxford toad. So uh, there's only one intruder wagon, isn't there? And I'll try and find a nice steady pace. So enjoy the running session. So what is my opinion on the banana van by Oxford Rail? I love it. That That's what I'm going to say. I love it. It is such a good wagon. The detail is just fantastic. Look at that underframe detail. All the brake detail. The moulded detail is very nice and very nicely done. And it just looks like a real uh, banana van that's just been scaled down. The vacuum pipes are separately fitted. Coupling hooks are nice. The buffers are really fine. One thing I will say is it's not terribly free rolling, but do you know what? It's actually okay. Um, the coupling uh, hooks, the uh, chain links are sadly a problem. They're actually screw links, aren't they? But yeah, that's the only problem with this model. Like, well, it's fantastic that they come with the model for that price. I know wagons like <coughs> Backman, uh, which is actually behind the banana wagon that didn't come with things like that and it cost 23 pounds and that's a smaller wagon so yeah i really like the fact that they come supplied with them and i really like the fact that you can have them as a detail but i feel like they uh, missed out an opportunity to make them as a functioning item because do you know what some people love the idea of using proper chain couplings i love it i actually use uh, my hatton's peak mask coupled to the tow brake van before with you know these uh chain links 
and uh, they're really good um the chain links i used were on the p class it, uh, of course but yeah it was it looks really nice and you can get a small gap between each buffer and it looks really nice but sadly with this as naturally as double o gauge with chain couplings this is just in general they are a bit of a pain to fit and uh, once they're on you never really want to take them off the layout so um that is one problem with them but that's in general of the whole of double o gauge model railways let's be honest but with this banana van you just can't use them at least around second radius curves which is uh you know a minimum radius many many people use so uh you know that's a bit of a shame isn't it and uh yeah i feel like it would have had potential to be used quite well at least the coupling hooks proved to be strong though i couldn't really strength test them under a load um just thanks to uh how awkward and how the ch uh, the chain links don't actually work so if you want to use chain links on this wagon you're best to buy somewhere else um unless you want them as a general decoration dangling down then i wouldn't recommend trying it and uh, risking breaking your rolling stock look at the sentinel and uh, you know like i say it's only on the sentinel it's only a detail um not expected to perform in that way really but you know that's what uh, life's like isn't it and uh yeah, I can easily fix the Sentinel. I'll just take a, a little blob of poly cement and some tweezers and push it back in place. So it's nothing too major on the Sentinel if you're worried. But yeah, I wouldn't really try doing it yourself. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a like. If you think I was too fair or too unfair or just want to say hello, comment down below. And uh, share this video with your friends and people who may want to buy a banana van from Oxford Rail. I will thoroughly recommend them. Uh, definitely I love these wagons to bits the detail on that is just fantastic especially that under frame detail I know I keep saying it but it definitely stands out and please definitely consider subscribing to the channel for more reviews running sessions and uh, other things like projects and uh, you know just general videos as well as bonuses and what have you and uh, if you don't want to miss out on a single video by me a single bonus or a standard video then all you need to do is click the bell icon next to the subscribe button after you've pressed it. So yes, thank you for watching and I shall see you next time. Cheerio for now, I'm just going to let the sentinel roll by. Oh, that's a good wagon.